All right. The crappening. I almost blew my uh, video I recorded today because I almost recorded from the wrong mic. You want to clap? Wait, say that again. You almost blew your video? The builder. Can we fix it? Hi, everybody. This is Big Ankovich. Welcome back to another episode of That Gets My Goat. Is that it? Is that, that that's all you got to say? Well, this is. Well, I was. Yeah, I was going to let you introduce yourself. <laughs> really? I, you have. In the 200 episodes we've done, you've never let me introduce myself first. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't, I don't care. Well, it's time to turn over a new leaf, I guess. We have a format. <laughs> so, let, yeah, let's see how it feels. Hey, everybody, this is Rish Outfield. Nice. That was pretty impressive. You had like a, a full on radio voice there going. And who might you be, sir? This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. <laughs> All right, welcome to another show. Today we're going to talk about Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. Do you know that? That's right, it's one of my favorite Australian children's shows. Whoa, 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 it's Australian? Yeah. Ew. Yeah, it comes uh, right behind The Wiggles. You come behind the wriggles. <laughs> oh, you know I do. <laughs> oh, it's horrible, dude. <laughs> do you know the song for Bob the Builder? I know you're a big fan, so sing it for me. Uh, I believe it goes, Can we fix it? Yes, we can. It's like a call and answer with the kids at home, right? Yeah, they start with that, and then they have a song that goes, Bob the Builder, can we fix it? Bob the Builder, yes, we can. Oh. Okay. And then they sing about who's in the show and blah, blah, scoop, muck, and dizzy, or I can't remember what all their names were. Rolly 2, uh, somebody and somebody joined the crew. I don't remember. Shoot. Uh, this show's blown. We might as well just, let's turn it off. Well, I know the listeners have. <sighs> Can't do a show about Bob the Builder now. Uh, okay, so we're not really talking Bob the Builder. We're just talking, can we fix it? Uh, what, what is that? What are we referring to here, sir? <laughs> well, how much time you got, boy? Uh, as much time as you'd like. And not long ago, Sony Pictures put out... They, they made a surprise announcement that... There is a secret, well, well uh, hush, hush, Ghostbusters movie coming out July of 2020. And it's going to be directed by the son of the original Ghostbusters director, Ivan Reitman, his son, Jason Reitman. And that's pretty much all that they have revealed about it. <laughs> Except that it's technically a Ghostbusters 3 Rather than what we got just a couple of years ago, the Paul Feig Ghostbusters remake, or as young people like to call it, reboot. Yeah, that's Canadian. Yeah, I'm not, that's right. I'm not Canadian, so I, I, I don't say reboot. It's rebout, yeah, is what you're supposed to say. <laughs> so anyhow, this announcement came out. They released a trailer that doesn't actually have any footage from the film, but it's something that they shot to get people excited about. And suddenly there was talk on pros and cons about this. You know, some of the diehard Ghostbusters fans were like, oh, hallelujah, finally we're going to get a, you know, a real Ghostbusters 3, you know, the thing that we've been wanting for, you know, all our lives. And, um, uh, you know, the other people, there were people that opposed it and said, you know, oh, this is why we can't have nice things. Poor Leslie Jones, who was in the Ghostbusters remake, tweeted that she found it immensely disrespectful that this movie was going to basically say that her movie never existed. And I wanted to put my arms around Leslie Jones and tell her, well, but that's what your movie did to the original two Ghostbusters movies, see? So I, I guess it's ironic that you're upset about that. But I would be afraid to hug Leslie Jones because she could break me. Very easily. Yeah, but in in fairness, so could Kristen Wiig. Oh. <laughs> we had uh, Jay Leno 
show up on the show just now. I thought that was kind of neat. <laughs> Celebrity guests aplenty. Good of him to come by. Now get him out of here. He's ruining our show. Anyway, the question, though, that this announcement of a new Ghostbusters brings to mind is, does it matter? The damage that the Ghostbusters remake did to the franchise, what if it's too late to do another Ghostbusters now? What if the franchise has been broken by the remake? Sorry, uh, if you recall, when it hit video, they changed the title to Ghostbusters colon Answer the Call. Do you remember that? <laughs> no, I didn't realize that. Oh, they, they, they honestly did. Yeah, it's called Ghostbusters Answer the Call instead of Ghostbusters the Remake, as we all said. Or, you know, you could say the female Ghostbusters or, or whatever you want to say. When it was released theatrically, it was just called Ghostbusters, right? Right. Okay. But when it came out on video, suddenly there was a subtitle to it. Like, live, die, repeat? Exactly like live, die, repeat. Exactly. Although I think it was more of a, this is a franchise and this is the A New Hope subtitle of this Ghostbusters <laughs> retroactive naming thing than we are embarrassed that our movie was called Edge of Tomorrow. So we're going to call it something <laughs> else. Anyhow, sorry. The question remains. Is Ghostbusters broken? Is Ghostbusters too wounded to survive? When July of 2020 comes, are people even going to care? Should Sony even bother? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm asking, I guess? Yeah, yeah. And I think, I, so. I think I talked to you about this when they first announced it, and I was just like, dude, this is not a rhetorical question. I don't know what the answer is. I think you and I had a little conversation where we talked about other franchises that had been damaged or you know, bad movie uh, had had torpedoed the franchise or ruined the franchise. And you said, well, you know, there's a bad taste in the audience's mouth when they think of this. Is it even worth pursuing? Or has, has the water been muddied? And so I wanted to talk to you about Ghostbusters and then other projects, other franchises that they're wanting to do this with because I, I honestly don't know. For me... I, I didn't see Ghostbusters 2016 because it was a remake of Ghostbusters. But I was super upset when I was told that the reason that I didn't go see it was because I was sexist. Uh -huh. Because of misogyny. And, and I was surprised that Sony led with that. But it was one of their talking points. And, and you know what? There is scads of misogyny in the world. I'm not denying that it exists. But I honestly don't feel like that's why I I didn't go see it. Why I didn't support it. It just it bums me out when you know what I mean when when somebody says you don't like Taylor Swift's new song because you don't like blonde girls and you're just like but no 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 <laughs> have you heard her new song? Or you know what I mean when somebody tells you why you feel something. That's always irritating. Right. And to, to have them just say anybody who doesn't go to, doesn't want to, go to, doesn't love, Ghostbusters answer the call is a misogynist. <sighs> well, maybe I won't go see any Ghostbusters movies then. Right, yeah. I mean, how much has the well been poisoned and is Ghostbusters 3 worth doing? Can it save, can uh, it you know, it? what there is? You know, is there f a, I don't know, I hate the word fandom for some reason. Where did that come from? Why is it called a fandom? I don't know. I, I prefer the word fan base. Yeah. But what is it you don't like? Well, I don't know. Fandom just isn't a word. Oh, okay. It's like a made up word. <laughs> Why do we call it a fandom? Um, but yeah, I, uh, well, I will go, I will go with fan base because yeah, they've used fandom so much that I'd forgotten that there was a word fan base. Now I've forgotten what I was saying. Oh, is there a fan base left 
enough for the Ghostbusters to, you know, warrant making a Ghostbusters 3, will people want to go see it? Or are they just like, no, no, forget it, man. You, you know, we've said a bunch of times on this show about various franchises, you know, the old adage, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. You know, are people ready to go get fooled twice? Some franchises are more resilient, I think, than others, or are maybe more beloved than others. Like, and this is a totally different uh, reference, but I love Metallica. Metallica changed substantially in the 90s. They went from a metal band down to a hard rock band into kind of an alternative grunge kind of a band. And then they tried to go back to being a metal band, but they weren't as good at it as they used to be. It's like they'd lost their mojo. But the thing is, I liked them so much, I followed them through all that shit. I bought all of their albums, actually on disc, even past the point that people bought discs. I still bought all their albums on disc. Until they finally found a way to break me and to get me to stop listening to their stuff anymore. And that was when they did an album with Lou Reed. They did it like a combined Metallica and Lou Reed. And I was on Facebook one day when a thing came up and said, Yeah, listen to the sample of the first song from the new Metallica album with Lou Reed. And I played it. And it was the worst thing that I had ever heard. And boom. So I have never looked back. I've, I, I, they came out with a new album a few years later after that that didn't include Lou Reed, but I did not buy it. And yeah, it just it broke my fandom. I, <laughs> I left the fan base with that. So, you know, it was resilient. I went through a lot of their less exciting stuff for years and years before I finally washed my hands of them. But, you know, is Ghostbusters one of those things that has that super dedicated fan base? They haven't done any. I mean, aside from that 2016 movie, they hadn't done anything since the less than stellar Ghostbusters 2 movie from what? 1989, 7, 6? 89, good job. (laughs) Well, I pretty much said like half the years of the 80s there, so I had to get one of them right. But I don't think I ever, well, did I ever see that? I can't even remember if I ever saw. Maybe I already heard so much bad things about that movie that I didn't even actually see it. I know it's the secret of the ooze. Wait, no, that was Ninja Turtles, wasn't it? It's it's the same premise, though, yes. There is the secret of the ooze in Ghostbusters. <laughs> what was Ghostbusters 2 called? Did it have a subtitle? It didn't. It, the subtitle was 2. Oh, okay. So it, it wasn't the secret of the ooze. That was just... Me adding that on because it was about ooze. Okay. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm afraid that Ghostbusters uh, may not... I mean, after 20, 30 years, I don't know that they have a fan base that's just itching for more, raring to go. It's not... I mean, it doesn't feel to me like Star Wars where, you know, they announced that they're making prequels and everybody shat their pants and waited in line outside their theater in a tent for six months so that they could get tickets. And then they watched all of those, and they were terrible, but they didn't even realize they were terrible until after they'd seen it five times. And then they went away, and they were done with those movies, and they thought, oh, fool me once. And then they announced Disney was making movies, and they all shat their pants again, and they didn't wait outside a uh, theater for tickets because that is a thing of the past but they i don't know sat uh, and like clicked refresh on the buyer ticket site on fandango or whatever over and over and over again until they got their tickets and they said well, they went on sale months ahead of time too i remember seeing like ads at the theater buy your tickets now and it was i don't know july and the movie came out in december or something you know, that's a fan base that has 
some serious staying power and, and maybe we'll talk about it later but that's another one that's got issues it seems but uh, ghostbusters i don't think is like star wars i don't think it has that kind of staying power well i, I don't know i i don't i i like ghostbusters a lot the 1984 film and i would have been happy to go see a third and a fourth ghostbusters and if in 2016 the movie had been, you know... Ghostbusters 3? The Ghostbusters are old, and they're retiring, or they've been retired for a long time, and so these four women are going to see if they can bring back the Ghostbusters. I would have gone to see that movie. Yeah. And we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right now, we would be saying, oh, wow, they announced a sequel to Ghostbusters 3. Are, are people going to go see it? But But you can't. I don't think that you can if you are Sony... And you're trying to please everybody. I don't think you can. If there were people that liked the 2016 movie, you can't just say, well, uh, what if the old Ghostbusters hand the keys to the Ecto-1 to f these same four women from 2016? You can't do that because it was a remake. There never had been Ghostbusters before. You know what I mean? They didn't right. leave the door open that maybe... Dan Aykroyd and, 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 and Bill Murray and Ernie Hudson could show up as their Ghostbusters characters. I, I, you know, I, I heard that they did show up as cameos. Yeah, but they, they, were, they were cameos of other characters in the movie, from what I understand. But they didn't even leave the door open enough to say... the, the I'm going to say it. I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but I'm going to say it the real Ghostbusters could show up again in the future sometime. Oh, you mean the cartoon ones? Okay, well, we're out of time, folks. Thank you. Please hit subscribe, hit like, because we are on YouTube. The podcast is over. For, for example, this summer we've got Men in Black International coming out. Huh? Okay. And it is a new Men in Black movie but it's not a remake of Men in Black. It is a new pair of agents in the Men in Black universe that are, you know, going to fight aliens. But it is not outside the realm of possibility that you get to the end of that movie and Chris Hemsworth says, what are we going to do now? Or however Chris Hemsworth talks... And the door opens, and there is Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. It's not outside the realm of possibility that that could happen. And everybody that didn't know it was coming goes, oh, and they're super excited. And then the credits roll, and you're like, oh, my gosh, when will Men in Black 5 happen? I can't wait to see these two team up. Was there a Men in Black That's 3? not outside the realm of possibility because it takes place in the same universe. It's not a remake. It's a sequel or a spin-off or whatever you want to call it. And they chose not to do that with Sony's Ghostbusters remake. Right. And I, I guess I've tipped my hand what my opinion is on this whole shit show. But can... <laughs> can, we fix it? can you fix it, Ghostbusters? Yes, we can! Oh, sorry. I thought you were just singing the song. If... We see the trailer a year from now for Ghostbusters 3, and they're actually calling it Ghostbusters 3, or they're calling it Ghostbusters colon, pass in the torch. And you see a geriatric Dan Aykroyd, you see a living dead Bill Murray, and you see Ernie Hudson, eh, he still looks pretty good, in the trailer, and then Zac Efron, and I don't know... Just people that are young and attractive, and they're going to have a girl one. They're going to have an Asian one. They got to have Jonah Hill can be the the fat one, or is he still fat? Oh, I don't know. He yo-yos, dude, like you wouldn't believe. Last I looked, though, he was he was fat again. Okay, good, good. He's like Peter Jackson. We don't want any skinny Jonah Hill. We want fat Jonah Hill. The fatter, the... B oh, my gosh. No, Jonah, I didn't mean... Oh. <laughs> okay, we weren't serious when we said the fatter, the better. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, sorry. The question I had asked is, we go see this trailer. That comes up. It's got those three actors in it. It's got, I don't know, a 90-year-old Sigourney Weaver in the trailer, too. And you're just like, oh, okay. 
What is the audience reaction and what is your reaction? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. I actually have the toys of Ghostbusters up on my shelf. They're recent toys. They're not from like the original, you know, like the real Ghostbuster cartoon toys or whatever uh, they made. I don't think they made any uh, actual Ghostbuster movies toys, but uh, they came out with ones of the original four Ghostbusters at the same time as they came out with ones of the... Uh, the new Ghostbusters. I wasn't. I never saw the new Ghostbusters movie. Pa- uh, I was going to say Passing the Torch. What was it called again? Answer the Call. I never saw yeah. Answer the Call. And so I wasn't interested in getting the figures from that. But I did see the original Ghostbusters movies. It was one of the few movies that I saw in a theater. Possibly one of the first that I saw in a theater. Because I had this friend, Joey whose uh, parents would get him everything he wanted. And, and Joey would take me out to, to movies all the time. He wanted to see this movie or that movie. Oddly, most of the time it was Richard Pryor movies. But uh, this time around, he did take me to see Ghostbusters. And, you know, it was already the phenomenon that it uh, became. Yeah, it, it was something I really liked and I enjoyed. And, and I have it, but... I don't know that I am super excited about any resurgence of the franchise. Uh, I don't know if it's worth bringing back again. I mean, I suppose what really matters is, is it going to make money? Are people going to show up to see it? So it doesn't matter if I am going to see it, as long as if I think people will. And I I think it's possible. Uh, It does feel to me like what they did... By releasing the last movie and going the route that they did is they basically divided their fan base. I think there are people who are going to be loyal to that movie and loyal to their political uh, side. And they're going to say, no way am I going to see this new movie because basically it's kicking my, my movie in the face. And saying that you're not worthwhile or you're not cool or you don't matter. And then there's going to be the other people from the other political side who will say, I hated that old movie, um, but this one I'm going to go and support because it's the real Ghostbusters or whatever. And then they'll come out and they'll be on their side. But that's only half. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be, I don't know what the percentages are, but it seems like you really shoot yourself in the foot when you do that. You know, you, you shoot yourself in the foot. You cut yourself in half. You cut off a leg. You can't walk when you take your fan base and split it down the middle and then still expect to make lots of money or make the same amount of money. You can't make the same amount of money with half the amount of people. So I wouldn't be surprised if it makes similar to the same amount of money that the uh, last movie, the 2016 movie, made. So we'll see. Okay. All right. Well, so a minute ago you mentioned... The franchise, before we started recording, you referred to the Backstreet Boys as the boy band. (laughs) And, uh, you know, there might be people that argue, but I I still think of Star Wars as the franchise. Uh The biggest of the franchises, the most successful of the franchises, the most tentpole of tentpole franchises. But... It had its very first failure in 2018 uh, with Solo, a Star Wars story. I mean, unless you count the Clone Wars theatrical film. Do you count that as a Star Wars movie? I wouldn't count that as a Star Wars movie any more than I would count Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse as a Marvel movie. Okay. But, I mean, those are apples and oranges. One was good. And one was three episodes of the animated series stuck together. Sure, I'm just saying they're animated and so they're not together, if you know what I mean. Okay. I also would not count the Ewok Adventure or Battle for the Planet Endor in there either. Well, okay. Despite getting, you know, admirable ratings. You're Ewokist. <laughs> I am. Okay, so so they had their first failure. I mean, I... I, I don't know that I would go as far as to say that Solo was a bomb, but man, I would never have guessed. The Vegas odds against a Star Wars movie failing at the box office 
have to have been astronomical, and yet it happened. And we're in that window uh, before Episode Nine comes out, and a lot of people are saying Star Wars is dead. A lot of people are saying, no, it wasn't Solo that killed the franchise. It was The Last Jedi that killed the franchise. Mm -hmm. And it's really surprising how divisive that movie was. But I can't, you know, as, as much as I liked it, I can't just say it was a resounding success. You know, just because it made a billion dollars doesn't mean that it, it didn't alienate a lot of fans or piss off a lot of people or the the reaction to that movie was really unlike any that i i feel like we've had uh, the closest is probably the reaction to phantom menace but uh, even though the internet was alive and well in 1999 and 2000 it was not what it is now and boy the forum of the people that hate last jedi it could not have been bigger and more public and so i got to ask the question Star Wars, can we fix it? Can we fix it? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I wonder if Star Wars might have to go into hibernation again for a while. Because people were rabid about Star Wars again when they announced that they were going to do episode 7, 8, 9... People were super excited and they put out that trailer and people cried and they went, oh my gosh, it's the Millennium Falcon. <gasps> and they were like crying on their reaction videos, which by the way is the lowest, worst form of entertainment. Makes puns into masterpieces, those uh, reaction videos. But uh, people have cooled. I think a lot of people have cooled off about Star Wars since then. They similarly were jizzing in their pants when we saw the trailer for The Phantom Menace. You know, it had been, I don't know, 15 years. We'll, we'll just round it off to 15 years since the last Star Wars had uh, been around. And everybody missed it a great deal. And when we saw those funky floating tank things come over the hill, the grassy hill everybody went oh my gosh it's gonna be so rad and then after a while you know i think i mean shoot even i saw that movie three times in the theater and i didn't have a lot of money i was a college student i didn't go and see first run movies back then i went to the dollar theater only but i saw it three times in full price theater a lot of people did. How many times did you see Phantom Menace in the in the real theater? Five. Five. So, yeah, I mean, you and I were not unusual. There were many people, I would say there were many people that saw it in double digits. And uh, by the time we got around to Revenge of the Sith, the, the, the opinions had turned completely against this prequel trilogy. And in the intervening years, people have talked about just how terrible it is. But then, weirdly, we've gone... I mean, it wasn't quite 15 years, but almost 15 years. And all of a sudden, you got people who are saying, Oh, no, these are great. And they're, these are the kids that grew up on these movies. And now they're looking back at them. And, oh, they're so great. Uh, I love the prequel trilogies. And if you don't love them, then you need to grow up. <sighs> And you announced Star Wars and they're all excited for it again. And maybe, truthfully, I, I'm afraid that may be what it might take to fix Star Wars is just let it mellow for a while. But I don't think that that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to be possible. You know, Lucasfilm is not just Lucasfilm anymore. They are a subsidiary of the Disney Corporation and the Disney Corporation paid, what, $4 billion? They did. For uh, Lucasfilm. And they're not going to just be like, okay, yeah, we can wait to get our money back. They're going to insist on making movies. I don't know if there's a way you can save it without giving us a break. And I wonder if giving it a break will work this time around. Maybe there will be the kids that were raised on these three films or something, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember back when they used to have Star Wars all the time. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, now that we haven't seen it in so long. 
like the people that like the prequels do. But each time you take a break, the people like you and I <laughs> that were raised on the original trilogy are getting older and older and we're getting more and more curmudgeonly and we're going to be like your dad. We're just like, we don't go see movies in theaters. Uh, it hurts my ears with the hearing aid. doesn't really go well with the D-Box sound system. I mean, I don't know. Well, but but sorry, Disney had a bunch of Star Wars movies planned. Uh -huh. A bunch had been announced, a bunch had not been announced. I'm sure that there was a calendar somewhere that we're not privy to that had five, six, seven Star Wars movies on it. And then Solo underperforms, or tanks, or whatever you want to call it, and suddenly they're all gone. They're all off the board except for Episode Nine, the the last Star Wars film. Do you feel that Disney was right, or Lucasfilm, whoever made this choice, was right to pull all those other movies, or do you feel like that they just they jumped the gun after this fluke unsuccess? I don't think that it's oversaturation is the problem. I know people are trying to say that, but I don't think that that's the problem. Personally, this new universe doesn't ex doesn't interest me like it should. You know what I mean? I wanted to go back and listen to our old get my that gets my goats where we talked about Phantom or Phantom Menace. <laughs> we talked about The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi because I wanted to see what I said about them, try and remember what I said about them. Basically, we've gone to, to 30 years into the future and dropped right back into the original trilogy, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, there's still an empire. They just call them the First Order. Our heroes are still the Rebellion. They just call themselves the Resistance now. You know, somehow nothing changed with the end of The Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi, we defeated the Empire, and, you know, in the freaking... Special edition, they even added in extra celebration scenes where we saw everybody pulling down the statue of the emperor and everybody was so happy and yay, no more empire. But somehow, you know, still same old empire. The stormtroopers just got a slightly different face, but they're still all there. They still have a Death Star. They, I wanted something different. You know, I, I, they, one of the first things that Disney did when they took over Star Wars was they took all that expanded universe stuff and they totally axed it they just pitched it all in the fire and said okay this is all just i think they came up a name they call it like star wars legends or something like that now where it's, that's exactly right yeah it's all branded as legends now yeah so it's it's out there but it's just it's basically apocryphal stories about our characters that you know none of this stuff actually happened Han and Leia didn't have all these other kids. Instead, they had Ben Solo and etc. You know, that, that stuff went out the window. But that stuff advanced the universe. I didn't read a lot of it, I'll have to admit. I read the Thrawn trilogy in which we saw our characters. They were, uh, you know, trying to make the New Republic a thing. Uh, Leia was like a senator or whatever and was doing her stuff and you know they were they had things that they had to deal with and I, I think there's weird crap like there was a clone of the emperor and I don't remember all of what happened but I just remembered it felt like the story was progressing and this uh, new universe just doesn't interest me because because of that and m maybe there's some way you can just act like they do they're doing with the ghostbusters and just say oh yeah no this this trilogy didn't exist. This one is now episode seven or something. But I wouldn't recommend that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you can fix it uh, as far as that goes. I don't know how you make the universe work the way I feel that it should have. What do you think? I mean, does that bother you, the stuff that I mentioned there? Or do, you, or do you still appreciate the First Order, etc.? You and I have always been divided on these things. I had almost no problems with Force Awakens, except for I didn't know what the F was going on. And I felt <laughs> like that was a storytelling problem. 
And you didn't like Last Jedi out of the off the bat. And I the reason I know that is because we did the goddamn episode three times. <laughs> And I did. I, I love The Last Jedi. And, and it has flaws, but yeah, a stormtrooper bumps his head in the first Star Wars. But I, like I said, I can't deny that there is fallout from that movie and that there are people that were not just upset, but infuriated by it. Just, you know, go on YouTube anytime or go into any message board, even if they're talking about Lego Movie 2. And there are people with really, really strong negative feelings about Last Jedi, much stronger than there were about Solo. You know, I, I, I heard people say, eh, Solo, you know. But the rancor that people feel for Last Jedi uh, is remarkable. And, you know, I've already said my piece multiple times about those people and, and their whining. But, like I said, I have to recognize that there are people that feel that way and people blamed the non-success of Solo on their boycott campaigns and stuff like that. And, and you know, Lucasfilm hit back with, hey, there's no room for misogyny and racism in the Star Wars fan base. And, and people are just like, oh, did you hear that, Rich Outfield? How come Sony can call its fans racist and you get upset? But when Lucasfilm does it, you're, you're on their side and... I don't have answers for that. I really disliked Vice Admiral Holdo. Really. Mm -hmm. And I friggin' loathed the droid from Solo, the female droid. Mm -hmm. But is it because they were women characters? Am I a misogynist? I, it, I, I, hopefully that's a rhetorical question, but... I don't <laughs> feel like that's the reason I had problems with those characters... But there are people that heard those words that I just quoted you, and they took it personally. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, well, fine. I don't need you, Disney Star Wars. You're dead. Disney Star Wars is not canon. So, Fudge, what if December of, tw of 2019 comes and half the audience that went to see Last Jedi goes to see Episode Nine? I've been saying for months that, oh, it's, it's going to do just fine. People are going to see that it's just the same as the original trilogy and as the prequel trilogy, where the first one did the best, the second one did the, the worst, and the third one, you know, was in between. It's just that's how those things work with the box office. I don't know why. But what if I'm wrong? What if it fails like Solo did? There's not going to be any wiggle room in my mind that... You know, it was a bad timing, it was franchise fatigue, it was people didn't want to go see a movie that didn't star Harrison Ford that called itself Han Solo or whatever. There won't be any excuses other than those fans were right that said, Last Jedi killed Star Wars. So in many ways, I'm, I'm really afraid of that. I'm terrified. But at the same time, you know, I won't have to fight to get a seat, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I don't know if that's uh, necessarily a good thing, because if you don't have to fight to get a seat, there there really tends to mean that they <laughs> won't have seats next time around, because there won't be something there to watch. But, okay, um, sorry, you had asked me what I, th I thought, and I, th I still feel like Episode Nine will do just fine. It'll do gangbusters at the box office, it'll have a huge opening, and because the international box office is so important... It may do better than Force Awakens globally. In which case, Disney is suddenly going to remember, oh, you know, <laughs> we were going to have the Game of Thrones guys do a trilogy of Star Wars movies. And, oh, wait, that, that guy, Ryan Johnson, he's back on the schedule. He was going to do his own Star Wars movies. And, oh, shoot, Ewan McGregor said he was going to come back and be Obi-Wan. Well, you know what? We're going to do that, too. That's what I think will happen. Because I don't feel like Star Wars is dead. I feel like, you know, okay, they had a slump. They, they had some factors that lined up to, to shortchange this one movie, which was fine. Solo wasn't a bad movie. I didn't think it was great, but it was fine. And that, anyway, that's what I think. I think, yes, you can fix it. I think ep when okay. that first Episode Nine trailer comes out, not all, but some of the fanboys are going to be like, oh... 
Well, this is more like it. Yeah, this one looks good. You know what I'm saying? They'll do an about face because there's a reason that you love this franchise. There's a reason that you love this galaxy, this world, these characters, this universe, these ships, this music by the great John Williams, dude. Oh my gosh. Say what you will. Even the prequels had great music. And so, yeah, that's my prediction <laughs> is, yes, you can fix this. Yeah! Okay. And then Disney will be like, oh, hey, we got three Star Wars movies coming out summer of 2021. And I'll be like, oh, shoot. They learned the wrong lesson. That's usually what you can count on. Whatever the lesson is to be learned, it they, they take the wrong one. So I guess we shall see. Now, since we're on the can we fix it uh, uh, subject, are there other franchises that you uh, you think we should talk about? We've talked Ghostbusters, we've talked Star Wars. Absolutely, and I feel like we could talk about this for a good long time. I hope you have your seatbelt on. Uh, but... I don't. I may fly out of the car. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't get ejected. As you re reminded me, Disney bought Lucasfilm for $4 billion. And it was mostly Star Wars that they were buying, but they were also buying the Indiana Jones franchise. Oh, okay. And as of right now, there is still an Indiana Jones 5 on the release schedule for May 2021. And it was supposed to come out next year, uh, 2020. But, ah, shoot, Spielberg decided to do something else. And they said, okay, we're going to uh, postpone it a year. But 2021, they're still going to go ahead and do an Indiana Jones 5. But Indiana Jones 4 was not universally loved. Right. And poor Harrison Ford, unlike you and me, is not getting any younger. Oh, well, that's weird. And so I have to ask the musical question, can we fix it? Yeah, can you fix Indiana Jones? Can you... The last one was... What, what year was it? 2000, it was 2008. What, six? Eight? Okay. Yeah. 2008, and Indiana Jones had jumped forward into the 50s. He was fighting commies and aliens. <laughs> Greasers. And gigantic ants. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I have to admit, that was my least favorite scene. When the gigantic ants came around, that was, that was, you know, they, uh, we, when we talked about this the other day, I mentioned the phrase, uh, nuking the fridge, mm -hmm. which is a thing that somebody came up with to say, it was, it's like jumping the shark, except for this is the Indiana Jones 4 thing where, you know, Indy jumps into a fridge when he finds himself in the nuclear testing zone area, and apparently the fridge is enough to save him from dying in the nuclear blast. He's blown out the door of the house or whatever, and the fridge rolls across the desert, and then he hops out, and he's okay. And a lot of people, that was their last straw. For me, it was the giant ants. I really, really... The giant ants and also the swinging on the vines with the monkeys. There you go, yeah. The CG monkeys, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the same scene. Those two together w was what jumped the shark for me. But, I mean, he was already pretty old at that point. And now we've gone another 11 years, 12 years. 13 years? 14 years? Jeez. So, it seems to me like what Indiana Jones needs is like a bunch of helpers to go with him. And he just like says stuff and sends them off to do his errands. Because I can't imagine him doing a whole lot. <laughs> He's like the age of my dad or something now. Like, my dad's got like two new hips. <sighs> It's hard to see. How how old is Harrison Ford? I'm sure you know. <laughs> I don't. He was 72. What? He was 72 when Force Awakens came out. Okay, that was 2015? Yeah. Okay, so that means he's 76. Okay. And this movie's supposed to come out in 2021? 2021, sir. So that makes 78 when the movie comes out, right? Okay. So... 78... <laughs> Is really old. I don't know if he's he's really old, but he's Harrison Ford, dude. I know he is, but how believable is that going to be? Is it just going to be worse 
Are they going to have to have a, a CG body for Harrison Ford that runs around and they just have his head on top of it that's the real head? I don't know. Like, can you pull it off? It, it, I almost feel like what they ought to do, and I know, you know, it, it's kind of a sacrilege, but maybe they just need to cast somebody else, make Chris Pratt uh, Indiana Jones or somebody else and take us back to... Or they could even go further and go, let's, Indiana Jones Chronicles, you know, that could go all the way back to when he was young, young, and cast themselves a really young actor and then just kind of move forward through time with that guy doing a bunch of adventures. They could have an Indiana Jones every couple of years that way. But would that just be worse? Would that be like doing the Ghostbusters that they did you know, where they just said, forget it. We're rebooting. We're pretending that your movie never existed. Would that piss people off? Would they be like, no, Harrison Ford is not dead. Use him. Can you, I mean, I don't think, especially since it's been 13, 14 years, I don't think Indiana Jones needs to be fixed. I'm sure people are going to be raring to go with whatever you got. (laughs) But if you do decide to recast you gotta find some way to be gentle with it i don't know i'm assuming that they aren't because harrison ford is i mean it's indiana jones 5 is gonna have harrison ford in it right yeah just not shia labeouf for some reason (laughs) what what no he's busy doing his uh green screen motivational videos these days so yeah what do you think about indiana jones can you fix it I thought we talked about this. I, I I feel like three years after Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, there should have been an Indiana Jones 5. And three years after that, there should have been an Indiana Jones 6. The fact that they didn't do it made me think, oh, okay, so you guys also agree that this didn't work. Spielberg had talked about, well, you know, George and I couldn't agree on what we wanted to do. And that's why it took so long to make this movie. And finally, I just kowtowed to George and made the movie that he wanted and it wasn't the movie that I wanted. And I was just like, okay, we'll make the movie that you want. But that didn't happen. And blessedly, Ford is still among us. And my feeling is as long as Harrison Ford wants to make these movies, and as long as Steven Spielberg wants to make these movies, then keep making the movies. And and yeah, I, I don't know. He looked super, super old the first time I saw the first trailer for Crystal Skull. But like, Five minutes into that movie, I had forgotten that he was old. Same thing with Force Awakens. You know, he may have had gray hair, but he was still Han Solo. And yeah, you probably do want to surround him with young, sexy people that can do the heavy lifting and the fighting and and all that stuff. And the running and the screaming. But I think there's a difference between James Bond and Indiana Jones in that You know, Indiana Jones always felt like he was in over his head and got out by the skin of his teeth and got the crap kicked out of him in every single movie. You know, it's like if his knees don't work and he can't run like he used to and he gets winded going upstairs, he's still Indiana Jones and we can still root for that character. Whereas I wouldn't want to see a movie where James Bond had to use a walker. (laughs) I'm pretty sure you also wouldn't want to see one where Indiana Jones is using a walker. Come on. But getting winded is different than using a walker. (laughs) All right. Okay. Let me lob one your way. So we've talked Indiana Jones. Can you fix it? What about... Now, this is one of my favorite things from the 80s. And I know that you're a big fan as well. Possibly bigger than I ever was. The Transformers was a mega blockbuster film series. It made a literal shit ton of money. But they're terrible. They're absolutely awful films. And I have no idea why anyone ever went to see any of them. I went and saw the very first one and never went back. I I held firm to that adage. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. I didn't go back to get fooled twice. I don't even know how many there were. I know that just this past Christmas, 
that came out with a film called Bumblebee instead of Transformers 7, the dark side of the last night's butthole. <laughs> last night's butthole? But the funny thing was, this Bumblebee movie, I think it's like a prequel or it's out of the content I, I don't know exactly what the deal is if they're trying to say hey this is a new transformers and those old sucky ones they're in the past forget about them now we're giving you the real transformers <laughs> and bumblebee was actually a bug he was a volkswagen beetle and you tell me th- your feelings when you saw the trailer for this film and a certain transformer <laughs> appeared and little tapes came out and turned into things <laughs> dude i i gasped i was in the theater and i'm trying to remember what movie it was i was seeing let's say that it was uh ant-man and the wasp or whatever and they showed this trailer and i went <gasps> like i had just seen my best friend who I had attended the funeral of. And there he is <laughs> at the airport, stepping off a plane. He he is alive. I was just like, oh my gosh. I had the weirdest react. I had that reaction that you described people having where they saw the Millennium Falcon in the trailer for, Fan- for, for Forrest Gump. For Forrest Awakens. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh. Because not only was it you know, Soundwave, my favorite Transformer, but it looked like Soundwave. Whereas in the past, except for Optimus Prime, and you kind of have to squint on Optimus Prime, they often looked nothing like the way they were that the, they had looked when we were children. They were these Michael Bay abominations cobbled together from a billion different bits of metal and whirring gyros and stuff. But suddenly this was not that. It wasn't this revolting special effect, nauseating special effect. It was a character. It was a it was that character that I knew. And I was just like, holy crap. And I remember seeing that trailer where it was all about, you know, a girl and her car and their friendship. And that and I was just like, dang, dude, this looks like a movie that I would go see. This looks like what Transformers should have been from the beginning. I think you and I must have had this conversation because I felt like you felt, if not exactly the same, similarly to it, where you're just like, yeah, yeah, I, I liked when they had this 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 moment with her, you know, where she says something like, you're my best friend or whatever. And in the trailer, it's just like, that's nice, dude. Oh, I was actually talking about A Dog's Way Home when when I said that. Sorry. Ah, you piece of crap. (laughs) Okay, so I'm just speaking for myself. But, and I hate to say but, I hate to, because it's it's ruining everything I just said. I still didn't go see it. I still didn't go see Bumblebee. Yeah, that's what my next question was going to be. Did you see it? No, you didn't. And here's (laughs) the thing that's even worse is... Nobody else did either. Of all the Transformers movies, the modern Transformers movies, the live action, whatever you want to call the Paramount Transformers movies, Bumblebee made the least. And that's too bad because I still want to see it. I still, I I heard that it was good and I, 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 I wanted to, but because I had been so burned by that first Michael Bay one and... I'm not ignorant, dude. I know what happens in the other Transformers movies. And and it's worse than what we saw in the 2007 movie. And so I just, I couldn't support him. I couldn't risk it. I couldn't take everybody's word for it that I would enjoy it. I, I'm sorry. No. And that bums me out because Transformers gave me so much joy as a boy. The toys did. The cartoon did. The 1986 movie did. And what's weird is here we are in 2019 and Transformers still gives me joy. You know, there's there's these figures in toy stores right now and I see them and I go, oh, I want that. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. You sent me a link to a band that dresses (laughs) up like the Transformers, sort of like Guar does. But instead of monster (laughs) costumes, they're like the Transformers from the 1986 movie. 
And it was magical, dude. I watched video after video of these people. The costumes were so cool. And the music was so cool. And, and it, it was my childhood. I, I was just like, wow, dude. And yet I still couldn't go see Bumblebee. Yeah, the band is called Cybertronic Spree. Just in case you're unaware of them, go check it out. And so, so I'm sorry. I don't know that you can fix it. I don't know that you can fix Transformers. I think it's broken. Is it something that requires mellowing like we had with Star Wars, a 10, 15 year break? Does it require a public ousting of Michael Bay? We say these movies have nothing to do with Michael Bay. Would that be enough? Yeah, because I was on the fence for Bumblebee. And, and maybe if Bumblebee had come out like five years after the last Transform- the last Bay Transformers movie, which was, holy shit, it came out in 2017, The Last Night Did. <laughs> and Bumblebee came out the next year. Ooh. So if they had waited five years instead of a year, maybe the ground would have had a chance to grow green again. You know? But it was just too soon, I think. And I don't know why the newest movie did so poorly. But I also don't know why The Last Night, the the 2017 one, did so poorly either. Because they're all off. Dude, uh, one time I had a big argument with my buddy Jeff where he said, you're just biased. You give these Transformers movies, you, you don't even give them a chance because you're too close to the old show and the toys. And he says, they're not nearly as bad as you say they are. And dude, Jeff is a genius. One of the smartest people I've ever known. (laughs) And he is wrong, dude. The Transformers (laughs) movies, the Michael Bay Transformers series, and I probably said this before, but I will say it again, is the worst franchise in my lifetime of cinema. They are unwatchable, horrible abominations with no redeeming value. I I remember people saying, but yeah, but look at Megan Fox. Look at her. And I was like, yeah, but I can look at her on the internet. I can look at her in other places that doesn't require what those Transformers movies are. It's not just that they took something that I love. They, They are, the, the stories don't work and their attempts at comedy doesn't work. And the inherent racism doesn't work. And filmmaking techniques that have been around for a hundred years are suddenly thrown out the window by this guy because he knows better? They're unwatchable, (laughs) dude. I I bag on the Star Wars prequels a lot, but the Star Wars prequels are great compared to the Transformers movies, dude. Mm -hmm. There are redeemable qualities in every one of the Star Wars prequels. And that's the only time you'll ever hear me say that, probably. But Transformers doesn't have that. And so, yeah, can you fix it? No. The next generation might be able to fix it. But but no, it's it's, it's broken. But it can't be fixed now. It's gone. It's, well, and, and, you know, if you're a little kid, your kid, your son just turned seven. He doesn't know Transformers for nothing. For him, maybe it'll be fine. Maybe when he's 10, a new Transformers movie will come out and he'll see it and he will love it and he'll love these characters because it'll be made by somebody who has a grasp of what these characters represented and who these characters could be. But just like turning Optimus Prime into a monstrous, murderous psychopath... Dude, that's unforgivable. Dude, you can't go back <laughs> from that. And, and, and that's why, as good as Bumblebee, I, I couldn't support it. I won't support it. Because what if even 1% of that money went to the same guy that decided it would be okay for Optimus Prime to rip a guy's face off? All right. Sorry, I got... Real, I'm sorry, I got really emotional there, and I apologize. I- no, I, I understand uh, completely. Here's the deal. We've been going for uh, at least an hour now, and I actually still have a lot of st- stuff that I want to talk about, so I think we need to make this a two-part episode. Okay? Is that cool with you? Yeah, well, I was going to suggest it, too. Okay, is that cool with everybody listening? 
I, I was going to ask you your feelings on Transformers, though, before we go. Hopefully we'll get to it. <laughs> My battery is flashing low batteries. So oh, that's why you want to go. a good time to quit you and then give change the batteries and do episode the two. Audience. But I'll see if I can get it in. Yeah, I mean, uh, I said before, uh, to me, the, the funny thing is you said last night came out in 2017. To me, the last Transformers movie that came out was what, 2006? Whatever that first one was. 2004? <laughs> Seven. Seven, okay. Uh, that's when the last Transformers movie came out because I did not see the others and I don't know anything about them and I don't care. I too have been tempted with this Bumblebee movie. It does look good, although truthfully, I don't know that I saw the same trailer that you were talking about where Soundwave is. I did see a shot, maybe in a commercial, where we see Soundwave and I thought, wow, that looks like Soundwave. Cool. And I even, there's a guy that I work with who went and saw it. Oh, no, he didn't. He he watched it on some pirating site. <laughs> but anyways, he told me, he's like, have you gone and seen this? And I said, no. And I told him my whole feelings for the Transformers movies and how much I hate them because, you know, they're just, they, they are not what I love from being a kid. And I'm not going to support that stuff anymore. And he said, oh, he, but you need, to, you need to go see this one. He kept asking me for like weeks and he, he said, you know, your daughter just started driving. She just got her driver's license last year. And he's like, it's a girl and her car and it's a perfect movie to go to with your daughter to see it. You need to take your daughter to see this movie. And I just, I said, I uh, can't do it. And so, yeah, I, I didn't go see it. Maybe it'll show up on Netflix or something like that. And I'll, I'll see it then possibly. With your daughter? Maybe we'll all, the whole family will watch it or something. I don't know. Uh, I know my son would like it. I, I, I think that the last night movie was on Netflix or Amazon or one of those streaming channels. Somebody threw it on and my six-year-old son watched it. And he thought it was great. But, you know, he likes Pokemon cartoons as well. So, you know, I don't put a whole lot of stock in his opinion as to whether something's good or not. Can it be fixed? To me, it wouldn't take as much as to you. Because these other ones that are out there, I am completely unaware. Like this murderous Optimus Prime, I, I've never heard of it, seen it. I don't know anything about it. Oh, gosh. There are times, Mr. Data, when I envy you. I wish I had not seen that. <laughs> I wish I didn't know what they did to Optimus Prime, dude. Oh, because I love Optimus Prime. Right. Me too. Uh, yeah, to me, the true Transformers movie is called Transformers The Movie. And if it doesn't have the touch... <laughs> then it doesn't have the feeling. <laughs> then it's not a Transformers movie. <laughs> I, th I think if they really came out and said, okay, we're going back, we're going to do these like the... G1 cartoons, you know, your Transformers are going to look like the Transformers. Uh, Michael Bay is gone. We've got the Game of Thrones guys, or we've got uh, the Lego movie guys, or Ron Howard, whatever. I don't know, something. And now we're going to do it totally different. And it's going to be like what you know and love. And your robots are going to actually have characters. Get ready to, to see Spike and Spark Plug again etc. I, I think that's really all it would take to get me to give it a chance. Uh, is that going to fix it? I don't know. On top of that, it needs to be a good movie. Number one for any of these things. You say, we're going to do this, 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 and this to get you to come. Okay, but if I come and it sucks, then you just wasted all that press that you've been doing because I'm not coming back again. So, that's my feelings on transformers and my battery held out so that's nice it's been flashing low battery at me forever so uh we're gonna call this show a show and we're gonna come back again with more can we fix it, can we fix uh, it? next next time i almost said next week <laughs> that's not gonna i pity happen. the fool that has to edit this <laughs> exactly oh. okay well then let's uh, thank our listeners for generously supporting me on Patreon, and uh, for listening all the way through to the end of the episode. Thank you. Thank you, listeners. 
And uh, yeah, we'll be back again soon with another one. I'm just going to hit stop, go change the battery, and then we can go- keep going. What do you think? Really? Okay. I guess we can do that. Yeah, let's... I'll see you let's soon. Let's do it. All right. You got the touch, big. That gets my goat. We'll be continued next time. Good. Run while you still can. Can we fix it? Bob the Builder. Yes, we can. Yeah. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons license. Why am I telling you this? I pressed the button. You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine.